As I said, the version two uh, completely revamped and reorganized uh, in some ways uh, credit system. So in some places we actually combined some of the credits to make it, uh, to make it simpler. Uh, some was getting alignment with, uh, with lead uh, and then addressing other comments and, uh, and issues. Um, another thing that came out of the pilot uh, project phase that was developed in concert with version two was a reference guide. And so this is a repository of a lot of information that uh, I mentioned on that earlier slide about uh, resources. And so uh, the rating system pretty much describes the, the credits and the reference guide uh, gives examples and, uh, and a lot of other, uh, uh, a lot of description of strategies and tactics that, uh, that were used to achieve uh, various, uh, various credits in different locations. So it's a wealth of information. And the, uh, the reference, or the, uh, the rating system is available uh, as a free download from the, from the site's website. There is a, a, a nominal fee for the reference guide uh, and you can download it as a single document or, uh, or get an electronic copy and there's different, different fees associated with it. So if you uh, just, just need one copy or if you're a large office and, and, and using it, you know, it's, it's set up that, that way. Uh, part, of the, uh, part of the attitude in, in developing this is to make uh, as much of this available as soon as possible. And in fact, uh, that was part of the reason for releasing the uh, uh, earlier versions was uh, to have, uh, even as, as rough drafts, to have these ideas and, uh, and, and this information out there so that people could use it even if it wasn't to achieve certification. And, uh, and that we know, and that will be, continue to be the case, that uh, uh, not, it, it may not make sense for every project or every initiative to, to get full certification, <coughs> but there's lots of things that, uh, that can be used. As, uh, as part of this. So now, as I mentioned, we have um, metal colors instead of stars. Uh, and um, under uh, version two, there are different uh, point requirements than, than the first, uh, than the pilot project uh, stage. So you can see it's 70 points to get certified, 85 to get silver, 100 to get gold, and 135 to get platinum. And this has been vetted through, uh, like I said, all those pilot projects and a lot of, a lot of discussion around um, Finding that uh, that right balance between uh, being uh, being aggressive, but uh, but also getting as much participation and inclusion as possible, and this is uh, something that uh, and I don't I don't think I have the slide in here, but basically where lead is going as well as uh, sites is continuous improvement, and so the idea is to get uh, you know, to get uh, as broad a particip participation as is practical, but to continue to uh, to to move that bar forward. And, uh, and as things go from uh, obscurity to being more mainstream in terms of practice, that that, that threshold continues to, uh, uh, to move uh, in, in, in an upward direction. And, uh, and part of the intent of, of these programs is to transform the industry. And one of the challenges with doing, you know, with getting the, the platinum level in a lot of places, it may just simply not, that the skill sets to, to, uh, to you know, the materials or the skill sets to maintain certain aspects of sites just may not be in place in a particular market. Uh, and so creating the demand for those materials and practices uh, is one of the intents of, uh, of, of this tool. And that will happen as we've witnessed with LEED. So as I mentioned, um, Green Building uh, Certification Institute will be the administrative uh, authority and that's where you will submit a project for a lead uh, in, uh, or for, uh, for certification uh, and then um, and they will issue the certification uh, and, and also uh, like I said I'm not sure the time frame but uh, we'll set up an accreditation uh, uh, procedure and then this is uh, part of the, the becoming uh, part of the, the lead family of, uh, of, of, uh, of tools So this is a, uh, a chart that shows, basically the checklist that shows all of the credits. And uh, you can see, I know you can't read this from, from where you are, this, like I said, this is all part of the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the rating system guide that's a free download. And I'm going to show you in a minute uh, some of the other resources that are available on the site's uh, website. But um, 
under uh, site context, I described uh, some of those. Uh, and I'm just going to read through a few of these uh, and then delve into one of them a little bit, a little bit deeper. But uh, the uh, ones that are in blue, blue shaded, those are prerequisites. There are, I believe, 13 prerequisites. Uh, and under site context, in terms of where you choose to do a project, uh, if it is defined as prime farmland in your state, then, then it's off the list. So develop, basically converting prime farmland to, uh, to some other form of land use is, is, has been deemed to be uh, you know, not, not uh, measuring up on this, uh, on this tool. And so that will, uh, that, that's, uh, that's a requirement. Also, a building in the floodplain. And there are, there's definitions to what this is. And, and, and there, are, there are actually, in, in some cases, uh, may be something that's defined as prime farmland, but, uh, but uh, from a practical standpoint, can no longer be, be farmed, or it's at a, at a different scale. And in fact, the, uh, I'll, I'll describe that more, the, the one project that we did get certified. And that, that's a correction, by the way. We, have, we had, I think, uh, a dozen or so projects that were accepted as pilots, but only one made it through and got certified. And I'm going to share that with you in a minute. Um, but uh, prime farmland, floodplain, uh, not building in the floodplain, uh, conserving aquatic uh, ecosystems, basically that means don't build in uh, wetlands. Uh, uh, and, but again, that, that's defined more, more clearly what that, what that means and, and how, that, uh, how that is uh, measured. Uh, and then uh, not uh, di disrupting um, habitats for threatened and endangered uh, species. And some of you may say, well, those are already requirements. Uh, certainly uh, not building in, in wetlands or, or uh, uh, not uh, impacting uh, T&E species. Uh, and that's why they should be fairly easy uh, credits to, uh, or for prerequisites to, uh, to meet. Uh, but it, it needed to be said or, or established as, as part of this that a project, for some reason, did have uh, impacts to those uh, that that would not meet the, uh, the minimum standard of the tool. And then uh, under uh, pre-design assessment and planning, as I said, using an integrative design process, and there's ways to document that, uh, conducting a pre-design site assessment, understanding your site before you actually uh, design it. And then uh, uh, the third one is actually uh, an evolution from the first, uh, the first uh, version, which is to designate and communicate uh, the VSP, which is a Vegetation and Soil Protection Zone, VSPZ. And I'll show you what that is on the example that I have in here. But that's something that relates to actually a number of the, the credits. Um, and then uh, well, we're going to talk about water in a more in a minute, so I'm going to skip over that. Soils and vegetation uh, prerequisites are uh, creating and communicating a soil management plan. So basically making it clear that areas that are to be preserved uh, intact from a soil structure standpoint, that there's a plan to actually achieve that. And that means keeping construction equipment away from root zones of trees and other kinds of things, and having a plan and, and, and an approach to actually achieving that, not just having it on, on the, uh, the drawing. Uh, so that's a requirement. Uh, controlling and managing invasive plants. So, so if you have an area of the site that is being overrun by invasives, you have to address that. That's a prerequisite. And then using appropriate plants, which is really another way of saying don't specify invasive or toxic uh, 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 plants. Uh, so it's that, that's the, the minimum threshold that, that uh, uh, for under soils and vegetation. And you can see there's some others uh, uh, under, that, uh, under that category. Uh, and some of them have to do with the kind of vegetation, the degree to which you restore habitat, and, and some other things that fall under that category. Under material selection, one prerequisite, which is to not use wood from threatened and endangered tree species. So that's, that's off the table. And then a number of credits, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of these as well. Um, and then uh, the fourth design category, human health and well-being, of which there are no prerequisites, but uh, 11 credits. Uh, and uh, protecting and maintaining historic sites. So you, there's a cultural component to that, uh, 
cultural and educational component uh, to, uh, to that category. Providing optimum uh, site accessibility, safety, and wayfinding. So designing for inclusion of people of all abilities is, uh, is an area of, uh, to be measured. Uh, pro promoting equitable site use. Uh, some of this has to do with making uh, sites that are uh, either public or, 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 or not entirely public uh, available to the community for certain things. Uh, for having a meeting room available for, uh, for the, the neighborhood to use as part of a, a church would be an example of, of that uh, and documenting that. Uh, supporting uh, mental restoration, visual and physical connection to plants and water and living things, connection to nature, that's, that's a, a credit associated with that. Uh, supporting physical activity, social connection, spaces for um, meeting and, uh, and, and having community uh, outside. Uh, rather than just indoors in, in, in a building. Uh, providing on-site food production. That was one that got added after the 2009 uh, version. And that's something that, is, that there's a credit that's been developed around that. Uh, reducing light pollution, uh, fuel efficient multimodal transportation, uh, minimizing exposure to environmental tobacco smoke. Basically uh, uh, not, not having uh, uh, smoke be uh, an impact and then supporting the local economy. And that is um, in part through uh, having labor for construction and management of sites, uh, the, um, meeting a, uh, uh, a fair wage um, uh, rate. Under construction, uh, communicating and verifying sustainable construction practices is a prerequisite. And part of that is really just having a plan in terms of how that is going to play out. Not leaving it up to the general contractor or the owner to, to, to say, yeah, I'll take care of that. It has to be documented uh, and communicated to anybody who's involved in, uh, in that. Uh, controlling and retaining construction pollutants, and some of this has to do with um, uh, uh, how, as materials are brought to or taken from sites, that they're do it's done in a way that uh, that doesn't release those uh, elements uh, into, uh, into the atmosphere. And that sort of relates to the, the, the third, which is to restore, well, actually, I think under, under two is um, uh, soil uh, erosion control uh, is a prerequisite. Uh, and then restoring soils disturbed during construction. Basically, uh, you can't uh, strip off the topsoil and masquerade a site and then just leave it. That's, that doesn't meet the minimum, minimum standard. And then uh, restoring soils uh, uh, disturbed by previous development, which kind of relates to soils and vegetation. You can start to see some of the, you know, some of the, the cross relationships between a lot of these. Uh, what you do with construction debris, uh, keeping uh, waste from the from uh, waste materials out of the waste stream, reusing them on site, is uh, is part of that, and um, and uh, minimizing uh, burning of fossil fuels uh, and dealing with air quality. And then under uh, operations and maintenance, as I mentioned before, a plan for sustainable site maintenance is a prerequisite. So doing that as part of the design process. And then uh, providing for storage and collection of recyclables is a prerequisite. And then there are a few others in terms of recycling, uh, uh, minimal uh, chemical use in the landscape. Uh, and that's one of many that there are different thresholds. So there are point ranges within, within many of these uh, credits. Uh, reducing the use of uh, non-renewable energy as part of maintenance um, and uh, protecting uh, air quality during landscape maintenance, basically the kind of equipment that, that you use for landscape maintenance. And then under uh, education and performance monitoring, just a few, uh, promoting sustainable, uh, sustainability awareness and education, uh, and there are a variety of ways to accomplish that. Developing and communicating a case study, so basically taking uh, in things that you've learned uh, about several of these different areas of performance uh, monitoring and making that available to the public. Uh, and then uh, developing a plan to monitor and report site performance over time. How well do you measure up against these, uh, these metrics uh, over time in certain categories. And then the innovation credits, uh, of which there are up to nine available uh, for in innovation or exemplary performance in a particular area. Uh, so that, and you can see that there is, uh, with this now, a possibility of 200 points and then how the, the, the minimum uh, to get different ratings um, stacks up.
if you don't meet any one of those prerequisites, you cannot get certified. Uh, you can use this tool. You can you can build you know design and build it according to as many of the credits as as are applicable, but you will not be able to actually get certification. Um, and uh, and that's why as part of the pre-design assessment, that initial step, uh, you, using this that checklist as as a tool to go through these categories and take a quick quick uh, test. How many of these can, can we meet? Uh, or, or basically setting, setting targets that are further than you might otherwise do because you see value in doing that. 